All right, team, we're going to try it again. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Amen. But we're still going to get our prayer in this morning. Amen. We're still going to get our prayer in. Amen. So I want to welcome you all back to 6 a.m. Point of Prayer. For those of you all who are re replay viewers, this is our third time uh, trying again this morning. We're having some technical difficulties. Hey, Robert. But well, we're going to try it again. Amen. Amen. Uh, we thank God. Amen. For the word of God in Matthew 8 and 17. Amen. 1 Peter 2 and 24. Isaiah 53 and 5. Amen. That healing is available to us. I want to send that word to each and every one of you this morning who may be experiencing uh, infirmity, may be experiencing sickness, health challenges this morning. We do know it, Mr. Jehovah Rapha. Amen. We want to thank God for this time of prayer. The Bible says in Luke 18 and 1, men ought to always pray and to not faint. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I heal their land. I believe in the power of prayer. Every problem that you have is connected to a prayer. Every problem that you have is connected to a prayer prayer. Amen. Let's go to God's throne again this morning. Amen. We could never pray too much. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day that you've given us. We thank you, Father, how you redeemed the time. How you've been mindful of us. How you kept us in the late midnight watch. You kept us from all hurt, harm, or danger. You saw fit that we should rise this morning. Have breath in our body. Life in our limbs, air in our lungs. And for that, oh God, we say we are grateful. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our blessed assurance. Thank you, Father, this morning, knowing that we are in right standing with you. My prayer this morning is that our hearts reach out to you. That our faith is in you. That today we govern ourselves according to your word to your will, to your wisdom. We thank you, Lord God, that your hand of mercy has been outstretched to us. And we're able to walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil, Lord Jesus, because you are with us. Your rod and your staff, they are comforting us. We thank you, Father, that your presence is available to us this morning. You said that you are an ever-present help. It's in you that we safely trust. Though our enemies be camped about us, camped around us, Lord God, you, O oh Lord, are our shield. You are our buckler. You are the lifter up of our heads. We thank you, Father. Many there be which say of our soul, there is no help for us in God. But you are our right hand. You are our justice this morning and you prevail above the nations. Even as we go to our places of employment, our business, we go about our day, God. We thank you that we are firmly planted in your love. Through all of the abuses, the heartaches, the hurts that we'll encounter in our day, 
we are persuaded in your love. Paul said, for I'm persuaded in neither height nor death, angel nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I want to tell you this morning, whoever's watching me via Facebook, that no matter what your situation is, no matter where you are in life, that God's love is unsearchable, is past finding out. And that he loves his children. I don't know, I think this is for somebody this morning, maybe you've lost your way. Maybe it's been a minute since you've been in the presence of the Father. Maybe there's been this yearning in your heart to get back to him. It's been a while since you've spent time with him, since you've prayed to him, since you've talked to him, since you've been in his presence. One of my favorite passages of scripture says that God is married to the backslider. And I know we've made that term such a derogatory term in the body of Christ. Backsliders, we use that term, it appeals to our guilt consciousness and reminds us of the things that we have not done. But listen, I want to tell you this morning that, that word backslider doesn't need to impede your progress into the presence of God. Hallelujah. I'm praying for someone this morning who's walked out of God's covenant. I want you to know the scripture says that he's married to the backslider. Listen, and this is what's so important this morning. Our God doesn't believe in divorce. He hadn't thrown you away. He hadn't thrown you away. He hadn't cast you off. Like the prodigal son this morning, when he came back home, his father didn't scorn him. He didn't, he didn't shake his finger at him and told him, I told you so. Berate him and remind him of his poor decision. Now the word of God says that when he came home to his father, his father began to rejoice. He told his servants, go get the ring and the robe ring which was symbolic and a reminder of who family he belonged to. The robe signified that his son, even though he may have lost his mind for a moment, that he didn't lose his dignity, that it was still his son. And I'm praying for somebody this morning. I'm praying for you this morning. That life has beaten you down. Situations and circumstances have moved you out of covenant with God. And you feel too embarrassed to come back. You feel too guilt-ridden to reach out to God. I want to pray for you this morning and let you know that our God is long-suffering. That he's waiting for you. All you but have to do is reach out your hand this morning and say, God, welcome me back into your loving arms. I ask for forgiveness this morning and believe that you are faithful and just to forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I love what David said in Psalm 51. He understood that he needed to always be close to God, that he needed to pray for that. Psalm 51, he told God, Creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit, cleanse me with a hyssop, I shall be white as snow. Then will I be able to rejoice in gladness. Some of you this morning have lost your joy because the only place that you get joy is in the presence of the Lord. You may be happy. You won't get joy unless you connect it to him. So I pray for each and every one of you this morning to come on back home to the Lord. He's waiting for you. 
He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. I wanted to pray for you this morning and, and remind you of who our God is. He is a provider. I want to read to you the word of God because I don't like praying absent of the word of God. Of the man named Abraham. He's trying to figure out who God was. And the only way you get an opportunity to find out who God is is that there, have, there has to be some experience with him. Abraham had this experience. Listen to Genesis 22. And they came to the place which God had told him of. I'm in verse 9. Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand took the knife to slay his son and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said Abraham Abraham and he said here am I and he said lay not your hand upon the lad neither do anything unto him but now I know that you fear God seeing that you have not withheld your son your only son from me Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Abraham went and took the ram offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Verse 14 And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh said to this day at the mount of the Lord it shall be seen call that place Jehovah Jireh I don't know who I'm praying for this morning but you've sacrificed so much the burden has been so heavy it seems like you always have to pick up the slack you always got to turn the other cheek ever since the pandemic it's been all on you. And you've gotten to a place where you feel like, I don't know if I can take anymore. I'm secretly asking in the annals of your heart, God, are you still there? If I keep going in this direction, God, I'm going to run out of resources. I'm going to run out of energy. I'm going to run out of help. I'm going to run out of hope. Often we get to that point that Jehovah Jireh shows up. The God that provides. I'm decreeing and declaring over your life this morning. Even as you've sown your life into God, you've sown your life into helping your family and your friends. You may be at your wit's end. I'm decreeing and declaring this morning over your life that you get help from heaven. That God will send AAA assistance to your aid. Appointed angelic assistance to help you. I'm praying in the name of Jesus for you that you get support from the sustainer. That the joy of the Lord is your portion. That he gives you strength. And just when you feel like a failure, just when you feel frail, that the Lord will lift you up. That the Lord will create a standard in your life that no man can withstand in Jesus' name. I'm praying in the name of Jesus, even as you trust in God, that there be such a provision in your life, such an overflow your pantries would be filled that God would speak into the ear and the heart of your supervisors to bless you with a promotion I'm decreeing and declaring 
over your life because of your faithfulness to serve others. That the promise keeper who provides will put new furniture in your home. Put provision in your bank accounts. That the provision will be so mighty on your life that your children will feel the effects of Jehovah Jireh. In the name of Jesus. Because you've held your stance. Because you've held your position. And having done all to stand. That Jehovah Jireh will open up the windows of heaven. Pour you out a blessing. That you don't have room enough to receive. In the name of Jesus. As you call on the name of the Lord. That God will not withhold any good thing from you as you continue to walk uprightly towards him in Jesus' name. I'm decreeing that Jehovah Jireh would be so prevalent in your life that whatever you speak, God will back up. The word of the Lord says that Samuel walked in such favor with the Lord. That whatever he said, the Bible says God wouldn't let his words fall to the ground. He walked in such a, an authority with the Lord that whatever this man of God uttered, because God trusted him, he'd make it come to pass. Some of you have been praying in Jesus' name, helping other people in Jesus' name, bearing it in Jesus' name. I'm praying the favor that was on Samuel's life because God is not a respective person. He's only a respective principle. The same favor that was on Samuel's life, I prayed over your life, my life this morning. And whatever you believe God for, that the promise keeper would show up and not let one word fall to the ground. As a matter of fact, wherever you are in your house, your apartment, your job, your car, you just need to start speaking for it promises of God believing for Jehovah Jireh to back up your words you need to speak forth your business speak forth your peace speak forth your healing speak forth your finances God would not let a word fall to the ground speak forth your book speak forth your child's education this is the year that your child is going to do well speak it forth and ask heaven to back it up this morning. He is Jehovah Jireh. Verse 14, the Bible says, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. He called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. I know you have an address to your home. Know what you need to call your home? You need to call that place Jehovah Jireh. This is the place where God provides. Some of you are on your way to work this morning. I don't care what your colleagues, your supervisors, what they say. When you walk through the door, when you're on the phone with your sister, with your friend, your mom, they ask you, where are you? You need to tell them, I just walked into the place called Jehovah Jireh. This is the place where God is going to provide. I don't know, maybe you pastor a church this morning. You need to call that place Jehovah Jireh. This is the place where God is going to provide for me. You in your vehicle. You driving down the street. You need to say, this is Jehovah Jireh. This is the place where God would bless me. I expect to get a phone call while I'm driving. Somebody's been moved by the Lord to bless me this morning in the name of Jesus. We thank God for Jehovah Jireh this morning. This is the place where he's shown up for us. This is the place where he's lifted the heavy burdens. This is the place where we've created an altar and entered into covenant with our God. He would take care of us. When we have to make the hard decisions, He will take care of us. When we pushed into a place of 
of isolation, loneliness, and we have to go it by ourselves. Jehovah Jireh, he'll take care of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless each and every one of you this morning. Thank God for you being on point of prayer. Amen. I want to decree and declare provision over your life this morning in Jesus' name. Provision over your life, Robert. Provision over your life, my girl, Sharonda. Provision over your life, Miss Gwen, Mother Gwen. Provision over your life, Erica. Provision over your life. He's Jehovah Jireh, Jatina. Barbara, provision over your life. My girl, Sam, provision over your life this morning. In the name of Jesus. Ramona, provision over your life. He is Jehovah Jireh this morning. Amen. If I miss you, it's just because I can't see you. If I miss you, it's because I can't see you. Amen. All right. God bless each and every one of you this morning. Grace and peace be unto you. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Provision over your life for a long time. I see you this morning. Amen. Thank you for being on. See y'all tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Y'all be blessed.